Hi guys, this is another watch review and in this review we're looking at the latest offering from Corniche. Uh, I reviewed uh, one of their watches before, the Heritage 40, and now they have released the Historique, which is their first automatic watch. So naturally, uh, you know, a, a great step up uh, in uh, having a, an automatic watch. So we'll have a look at it in closer detail, see if it is worth the price that they're asking for it. So. Um, first of all, it's worth saying that the tagline, the strap line of the watch is that it's a modern watch with old school details. So really, they, they, they really, really want to stress that this is a true vintage homage. Uh, and we will certainly see um, more of that as we look at the watch. So first of all, it comes in a pretty nice little box. Um, they say that this is made of the same kind of stuff that... Um, uh, books used to be made of in the mid 20th century. That's their focus, mid 20th century. So we're talking 40s, 1940s through to the 1960s. So if we open it up, move that down here. So we have our certification here. Very nice. And we have a little instruction manual as well. Very smart. Always good to have a, a little... Uh, um, wipe as well and then we have our watch itself so little tag it's all very smart so here we go so I'll move that to one side now <coughs> okie dokie so um, true vintage homage as I mentioned uh, so let's talk about the specs price wise I might as well start with that it is on the slightly higher side uh, what they're usually offering. So 450 euros, that equates to around 400 pounds. Um, size wise, I've got a seven and a quarter inch wrist for reference. There we go. Okay, so seven and a quarter inch wrist. So we've got a, a diameter of 37 and a half mil, a height, very slim, nine mil and a lug to lug length of 43 and a half mil. So uh, 37 and a half mil, you know, smaller diameter certainly uh, uh, speaks to the, to the vintage uh, style, vintage theme. Uh, watches used to be a lot smaller in the olden days. So uh, this uh, is a testament to that. Um, uh, along with that, we have a, a light weight of 54 grams as well. So when you're wearing it, it is extremely comfortable. You barely notice it's there. Um, especially when you consider the, the the strap as well. I'll talk about how wide the strap is in a moment. Um, so um, yeah, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's a very nice, splendid size. For many modern people, it's going to be too small. But as they have already mentioned, this is a watch basically for those of you who want a new watch, but is practically the same as a, a mid 20th century vintage uh, timepiece. So water resistance, not so great. Three atmospheres or 30 meters, obviously. I wouldn't recommend going swimming in this anyway, but uh, you certainly don't want to because it won't handle it. It, it will have a, a measure of protection against any accidents though. Um, the strap width then, uh, we have 18 mil wide at the lugs, but it tapers down to a rather surprising 12 mil at the buckle. Uh, I've not seen a strap taper this much before, and I did query them about it, and they said they did a lot of research on mid 20th century uh, watches, and this this happened a lot. So obviously, because because they're very very um, uh, dedicated to uh, an old school, these old school details, they thought it made sense to uh, do that on their historic as well, have a really uh, really big taper. So there we go. So at first, I was a little bit surprised by it. I'll be completely honest. So that is something you need to keep in mind. Um, one year warranty as well, uh, so if anything happens, uh, then you're covered for a year. A uh, couple of extra features, so this, um, the crystal is made of hesalite, again a very vintage inspired uh, material, um, sort of like acrylic. Um, again, for, a, for the price of £400, pounds, €450, Euros, you know, you, you'd sort of really uh, be hoping for sapphire crystal um, for that much um, <clears throat> but obviously again it all goes through to their dedication to a classic old school timepiece uh, the dial as well is ceramic which is a, a nice touch and the dial is really nice but we'll go into that in, in closer detail later uh, movement wise so it is automatic Miyota 9015 we see this over and over again very reliable 
a decent um, alternative to the Swiss made ETAs, has all the same specs. Um, so high beat movement, 28.8 K uh, uh, beats per hour. Um, 40 hour power reserve, hand wind, hacking seconds, obviously automatic as well. Uh, so everything you need. Uh, and the um, they're, they're good to regulate as well. So this one in particular, I put it on my Lepsi watch scope plus 8.9 seconds a day. So I'd usually say anything within 10 seconds a day is pretty good and accurate. And uh, this obviously falls within that bracket. Okay, so let's look at it piece by piece. So let's start with the dial. So as I mentioned before, uh, a ceramic dial, um, but we also have this very nice um, like chapter ring, which is a uh, almost like a, a brushed steel kind of finish to it uh, with our applied hour uh, markers um, applied on top. Very smart and classy. I do like the way it's split up as well. Um, very minimal printing. So we have just literally Cornish historic uh, in the top half. And then on around the outside, we have a very subtle um, uh, hour uh, minute track as well. Uh, the date window has a very smart date. Uh, border to it. We'll be able to have a look at this in closer detail with the macro lens on in a little while. But everything is perfectly made. We have Dauphine hands as well pitched. So uh, they're very classic uh, and elegant in style. So um, yeah, everything is really, really well made. I personally think it's really nicely designed as well. Very, very classic uh, and um, uh, clean and crisp uh, as well. Um, moving on to the case then. If I give it a quick wipe with the Cornish, Cornish uh, cloth. So we have uh, fully brushed sides, and then a polished bezel, as you can see there. A polished top of the lugs as well, and then if we flip it over to the case back, quite a plain case back really. Would have been would have been nice to maybe have seen a. Um, a bit of the movement but again if they didn't do that in the mid, mid 20th century then Cornish weren't going to do that. We have various watch specifics surrounding the outside so just a, a, a concentric circular brushed pattern but then this uh, polished ring around the outside has all the various details as you can see. Um, looking at the crown, it's a push-pull crown but it has the C, the Cornish C logo deeply embossed on the end. It's nice and easy to use as well, so I can just pull it out and set the time like so, push it back in very easily. Um, so, so the case then, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, it's quite small, uh, but everything is really well manufactured. Um, nothing too outstanding to mention about it, but uh, it's good, it's solid, it's dependable. It looks smart on the wrist as well. It does create an impression with the variety of, of brushed and polished finishes. Uh, moving on to the Hesselite crystal. As you can see, it's extremely highly domed. Um, so the, if I bring it up here, you can see how much higher it sits above the, uh, the edge of the bezel. We have a, a nice dome to it as well. Um, but, uh, you know, this is the kind of crystal that it will scratch but it is easy to polish out, much like acrylic. Um, whether you want to have to worry about that for a watch costing £400 or not, it's up to you. It's whether you are truly, truly interested in a, a true vintage homage at the end of the day. Saying that, it does provide a very nice uh, kind of glow. Uh, it's, um, it's, it has a different visual appeal uh, than, uh, than a sapphire crystal. Uh, you know, it does have a certain je ne sais quoi uh, about it as well, uh, which is very hard to uh, describe, actually. Um, it is extremely clear, but it also has like a, a, li a, little, a little gentle glow to it, which is quite nice. And it certainly does add to that vintage feel. Moving on to the strap then, uh, it's, a, it's like a taupe colour. So it's a cross between a brown and a grey. The leather is lovely. It's very, very supple, very comfortable to wear as well and a very nice grain on top as well. Um, have this nice little like colored light orange uh, stitching as well, which does provide a bit of color, which uh, is nice and unusual. Again, quite vintagey as well. Um, the keeper loops are made of the same um, as well. Moving on to our buckle, nicer shape buckle. 
quite a uh, curvaceous and we've got some fluff caught on and the logo is reasonably deeply engraved on the end uh, as well but as you can see it has a nice little bend to it uh, it's not just like straight you know, very plain and boring but it has has an interesting shape to it while still being a, a pretty standard tang, bu tang buckle which is a, a nice touch okay uh, also has a quick release pins as well which is always handy um, every strap in my opinion should come loaded with these okay let's get the macro lens on and we'll have a look at it in closer detail so starting off with the dial so we can see this sort of um, base to the ceramic uh, central uh, part of the dial nice uh, nice texture to it and then surrounding that we have this brushed steel ring uh, and then after that it returns to that uh, textured uh, silvery champagne colour uh, the applied hour markers very fine and polished nicely uh, manufactured as well and then the hands these dauphine pitched hands you can see Again, pretty flawless in execution. No complaints there at all. Moving on to the date window. So we have this very uh, smart, polished uh, border to it. As you can see there as well, this border like uh, goes down into the dial as well. Usually it's just sat on top, but this goes down towards the date uh, wheel. So that's a nice little touch, something you don't usually see uh, and uh, something you wouldn't necessarily uh, expect either. Uh, it's a white date wheel. I, th I believe looking at the the font, I think it's actually the the stock Miyota date wheel. And then we have a little tiny uh, baby hour marker uh, adjacent to the date wheel uh, date window. Moving on to the case then. So here's our mug. So our, our brushed edge here, excuse the fluff, that's from the Corniche wipe. Here's the edge of the um, Hesselite glass as well. If I can get focused on it, not really. So let's have a look, quick look at the crown. There's the C embossed on the end. Nice uh, grip while still being quite small, easy to use. Moving on to the case back, here's just the circular brush in the center. And then we have surrounding it our details, which are nice and deeply uh, engraved and, and accurately so, uh, considering the size of the uh, text as well. Okay, so moving on to the strap then, here's the top grain, nice and bumpy, decent pattern to it. Here's our stitching as well. And on the underside we have Corniche stamped on that side. And then if we just have a quick look at the buckle. There's the logo, again, excuse the fluff. The logo deeply engraved on it. There we go. Okay. So, um, ultimately, I strongly believe that this watch would be for you. If you are as dedicated as Corniche are uh, towards a true vintage homage, I think I've said that a number of times, but everything about it is just that ceramic dial, Hessel like glass, um, a small uh, diameter, uh, just a gen generally small uh, uh, case of 37 and a half million diameter, um, thin 
tapering strap as well. You know, everything is very, very dedicated to, to that cause. So I will say to them, you know, well done for, for sticking to their guns and really sticking to their statement. A modern watch with old school details. Because it would be very easy to say, tell you what, let's just drop in a sapphire crystal. Uh, let's keep the strap, um, you know, just tapering down two mil or, or, or four mil at a max. But they've really, really, uh, they've really gone for it. Uh, and I think that is, uh, in reality, going to work for their favour, actually, because I'm sure there are many, many people out there who want to watch exactly like this, a mid-20th uh, century um, style watch with, uh, with brand new, you know, um, well, a brand new version of a watch. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, fair play to them. I think the price could be a little bit cheaper because of the uh, uh, the Hesalite glass um, mainly uh, and the fact that it's a Miyota 9015. 450 euros, 400 pounds, probably a little bit too much for my personal taste. I think if they can drop that price or uh, if, you, if you're interested in it, if you can get it on a sort of special offer or with a slight discount, it would certainly make, uh, make it uh, more palatable, uh, I think. But uh, apart from that, you know, it's, it's pretty much flawless. Um, very lovely design as well, uh, and um, it, it looks great on, with a suit. Um, you know, you can't complain at all. Um, fits perfectly under a cuff or under a jumper. As you can see, I've got my jumper on. No problem there at all, and it can slide out nicely. Uh, so, um, so yeah, very, very impressive uh, timepiece, and, uh, you know, a little bit different to what, we'd, what I would usually um, look at as well, because, because of this fact that it is this true... Uh, vintage homage. So this was the Corniche Historique and that was what you're all about. <laughs>